It's become really popular to be shitting on Kenny Pickett. Way too popular. Big deep news. You got national media, local media, and even the fans all telling you why Kenny Pickett sucks. Why he isn't the guy. Look at our former Steelers quarterback Josh Dobbs over with the Vikings in his first game. We should have never let him go. Or how about rookie QB CJ Stroud with the Texans last week? Threw for five touchdowns. Steelers, you picked the wrong young quarterback to hit your wagon to. Give me a break. Relax. You ever hear the phrase, comparison is the thief of joy? Well, that's what's going on right here. And I, actually, I'll take it a step further because this isn't even just comparison. This is negative comparison for the sake of negative comparison. Because if we want to compare young quarterbacks to Kenny Pickett, uh, why not Bryce Young with the Carolina Panthers? Isn't he struggling down there? The team's 1-7? and seven? Or what about a positive comparison? Why don't we spin it that way? Why don't we just take other young quarterback good performances and use them to bash the guy that we got in-house just because he's not putting up the same stats? But I know the one thing he is doing here is putting up wins, and I know that should be the main thing that matters, right? Because we could, uh, you know, bring up Josh Allen's first two years, Trevor Lawrence's first two years, or his first, like, 18, 19 games. We've done that in the past, and it shows why you should still have faith in Kenny Pickett. But we don't want to do that. We just want to point to other quarterbacks having good games, and to their credit, having good games, and are trying to use them to bash our guy in-house because he's not thrown for four or five touchdowns a game right now. But again, he is winning. We are five and three. Shouldn't that be the main thing? Keep the main thing the main thing? Like, has anyone here heard about patience or development, trusting the process or letting the process play out? Just because a quarterback in his first 20 starts isn't putting up elite fantasy stats doesn't mean he's a bad quarterback. In fact, I remember... Quarterback back in the day uh, for the Steelers, you know, 17, 18 years ago by the name of Ben Roethlisberger. Wasn't putting up elite fantasy stats. What was he doing? Winning games. Winning games. It wasn't always the prettiest. We were playing good defense, running the ball. Big Ben at the time would step up in the clutch, make a big play when it mattered. Isn't Kenny Pickett doing the same thing? And dare I say, I, I think Kenny Pickett with this team over the last two years has less around him than what Big Ben did. And I'm not comparing the two, apples to apples here, because I do think Big Ben is the better player, was the better player at that point in juncture of both of their careers. But uh, I'd say Steelers O-line right now, worse than what Big Ben's O-line was. Steelers running game, Steelers running backs, worse than what Big Ben had and Willie Parker, Deuce Staley, Jerome Bettis. Defense, maybe you could call it a wash, but, you know, that defense won a Super Bowl. That is yet to be seen here. So you get what I mean? Like, is Kenny Pickett that bad that over the last 17 games, the last full season that he has started for the Steelers, we're 12-5? and five? Isn't that good? And you mean to tell me he had nothing to do with that? Well, I think he's leading the league or second in the league over that span of time in game-winning drives with seven. That means something, no? Oh, wait, but I forgot. People don't care about winning anymore. People would rather lose pretty than win ugly. Because that's what Colin Coward had to say. That was his main takeaway after the Steelers Titans Thursday Night Football game. He was slobbering over Will Levis and talking about how great Will Levis is, yet he didn't win the game, yet he threw the game losing interception. Oh, he had a couple of nice passes throughout. I'll give him credit. But who threw the game-winning touchdown? Who stepped up in the fourth quarter and made every throw and every play needed? Kenny Pickett. But people like Coward and a lot of other people, a lot of Steeler fans right now, a lot of fans just across the NFL, would rather lose pretty than win ugly. Make it make sense. And am I completely exonerating Kenny Pickett for his misses throughout the first half or the first three quarters? No. Yeah, those are throws that you got to make. But am I putting my money on that that will continue? No, I think he's going to be able to hit a 5-10 to 10 yard drag route consistently as time goes on. 
But the thing you can't always say about quarterbacks when they come into the league is when adversity hits, how are you going to respond? And what we're seeing from Kenny Pickett is him stepping up when there's adversity, him stepping up when the game is close, when the game is on the line, is no fluke. He is comfortable in those scenarios. And that is the first prerequisite or first checkbox I think we should be looking for uh, when you're talking about a franchise quarterback. Like, how valuable is that when you're watching the game as a fan? How valuable is it if you're Kenny Pickett's teammate to say that, you know what, we're down maybe 10, 14 points, or it's a close game in the second half, third quarter, fourth quarter? I have belief. I have faith. I'd say that's invaluable. So if you prefer C.J. Stroud as your quarterback, or you like Will Levis better, or you think Josh Dobbs is now better than Kenny Pickett, go be fans of those teams, because I've heard enough at this point. And it's not all about just because Kenny Pickett is the Steelers quarterback that you got to like everything that he does or just automatically assume that he's going to be the guy. But you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that you're already ready to write him off based off everything we've seen thus far, based off him literally improving every start that he's been in the league. Now, have there been bumps along the road? Sure, but it's like the stock market. From where he was back then to where he is now, it's been constant improvement. The team is 12-5 and with him being the quarterback. And it's not in spite of him. Again, going back to the game-winning drives. But, oh, he's not putting up stats like C.J. Stroud or Will Levis. Cool, cool. You could take the stats. I'll take the wins. Because you see where stats get you. If you're just going off short sample size, if you're getting enamored by the stats, that could be some fool's goal because you know who else threw for four touchdowns in their opening start? It was actually with the Tennessee Titans. Marcus Mariota. C.J. Stroud. Cool. I, I think he's having a really good year. But how many times have we also seen quarterbacks pop off in their rookie year or their second year and then you don't really hear from them again? Carson Wentz. RG3. You could go through a list of guys. We're seeing with Brock Purdy. Popped off. Now things are starting to slip. A couple guys are getting injured. Defense are starting to figure him out. Okay, okay. Let's not take for granted what we're building here in-house and the good things that we're seeing from Kenny Pickett. Because you guys can focus on the negatives all you want, but there are good things happening, and there are good things that are continuing to happen with Kenny Pickett at quarterback here in Pittsburgh. So you guys focus on what you want to focus on. I'll listen to things like this from uh, Terry Bradshaw. Pickett doesn't throw for a lot of touchdowns yet. In time, he will. But he's the perfect quarterback for this team. Very selfless type human being. He doesn't mind handing the ball off. He's great in the clutch, great under pressure. And you saw that again today. And the Steelers on the road after a bye. Once again, Tomlin gets a victory. But that's it for this edition of Big Deep News on a Tuesday. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on what I just talked about down below in the comments. Stay chilling and peace.